Well, welcome to all of you. Um, let me start with you, uh, Max Tegmark. What's going to happen? Do you know? It's great to be back. <laughs> What's going to happen? We shouldn't sit here just like eating popcorn at the movies, waiting to see what should happen, because we are creating this future right now, and it's the most important job we ever make. So we have to snap out of that passive mode. It's either going to be, as you said, the best thing ever to happen to humanity, helping us amplify our own intelligence to solve all our problems, or it's going to be the end of us. And, and I think Elon Musk is right. I think... Um, it's not 50 years off. It's going to be very likely this decade that things go to hell in a handbasket or become great. And um, that's why we've called for the pause to give give policymakers a little bit of time to steer this in a, in, in a good direction. I'm confident we can get things right, but we need a little more time to figure out how to make this safe and make sure it's something that we control rather than the other way around. So, Mitchell Kaku, I... Woolly mammoths used to maraud around the world, dominating all in their wake. There are no woolly mammoths anymore because humans realised the best way to deal with them was to get rid of them. Uh, are robots going to be the effectively doing that to us, what we did to woolly mammoths? No, I don't think so. First of all, the cat is out of the bag. The point is not to kill the cat. The point is to tame the cat so that it has the best interests of humanity at stake. Realize that in a best case scenario, artificial intelligence could give us a new golden age, a golden age for society, a society of abundance, energy, food, medicines. We're talking about AI across the board ushering in a golden age. However, there are problems. First is jobs. We have to retrain workers so that they can be part of this new revolution rather than being uh, iced out of this. Second of all, there are criminals. There are impersonators. What happens if somebody impersonates Vladimir Putin and declares war on NATO? We're in big, big trouble if that happens. So it's a cat that has to be tamed, and I think we can do it. Because, of course, we have fact checkers, and also we have self-regulation. Take a look at the movie industry. After every movie, there's a statement saying that this movie was fake. All the actors are fake. So there has to be a disclaimer. There has to be a fact checker to make sure that the cat is tamed. OK. <laughs> Matthew Said, are you comfortable that we have the capability and perhaps the goodness in our hearts to make AI a positive for the world, or will nefarious forces, as they tend to do with everything, get the cat and turn it wild and basically trigger the end of mankind? Well, I'm a, an instinctive optimist, and I definitely would bet on the knowledge and ingenuity uh, of the human creators of AI to increase productivity, uh, additional wealth, but when you have the founders, some of the pioneers of this technology talking about an existential risk, let's kind of figure out what that means. It means the 8 billion people currently alive on the planet Gone. will be eliminated. But not just us. All of the future generations, the many billions who could experience the miracle of consciousness, mm. of existence, won't get that opportunity. And what worries me is not knowledge, it's the wisdom even if we decided to follow the advice of Elon Musk and impose a moratorium, how would it be enforced? Mm. What would stop a rogue nation well, that, continuing with yeah. that development and then turning on everybody else? This is what economists call a collective action problem. And the only way a species can solve that is through cooperation. That is precisely the social quality that human beings are struggling with, not just with AI, mm. But with other existential risks, nuclear war, climate change, right. bacteriological development, I'm worried. 